Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today I want to talk a little bit about the recent withdrawal of regulations pertaining to the new California bullet button assault weapons ban. This is easily the most requested video that I've gotten on this channel over the past several days, and because it's kind of a confusing topic, so I want to try and clarify a few things and tell you exactly what happened, and maybe just kind of talk a little bit about what we can expect, even though that is up in the air. Okay, so here's what had happened. Once the California bullet button assault weapons ban had passed, the Department of Justice has to submit regulations for that ban to the OAL, or Office of Administrative Law. The OAL then looks it over, they you know cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure that everything's legal, and then either approve or deny it. Now, to give you a little bit more background of what the OAL is, because I think it'll help you understand what's going on here, let me read directly from their website what they say their mission statement is. The Office of Administrative Law, OAL, ensures that agency regulations are clear, necessary, legally valid, and available to the public. The OAL is responsible for reviewing administrative regulations proposed by over 200 state agencies for compliance with standards set forth in California's Administrative Procedure Act, APA, for transmitting these regulations to the security of the state and publishing regulations in California Code of Regulations. So that's what the OAL does, and you're going to see that probably mentioned a lot if you see articles about this come up. So here's what happened. They did that. Uh, the Department of Justice submitted those regulations a while back, and then all of a sudden, just a few days ago, those regulations were withdrawn. When those regulations were withdrawn, it appears on the OAL's website as withdrawn, and people got really confused. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're no, no longer going to have the ban that we thought we were going to have? Does that mean that it wasn't approved by the OAL? And the questions kind of started flooding into me about exactly what was going on. So I had to research it myself to find out exactly what had happened. And now we'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen from this point forward now that we know that those uh, regulations were withdrawn. Okay, so now that we know that the regulations have been withdrawn, the first question we have to ask is who would withdraw them? Well, it wouldn't be the OAL because the OAL's function is simply to approve or deny regulations after they go over them. So they would have to have been withdrawn by the original submitter, which is the Department of Justice. So that leads us to our next question, and probably the most important question, why were they withdrawn? Well, this is kind of all speculation, but there's several different reasons as to why they could be withdrawn, and I'll give you my personal opinion here in just a minute. But one of the reasons could be that somebody from the OAL had looked over the, uh, the regulations and said that they were overbearing, overburdening to the public, they could have been against the law, uh, there could have been some type of issue, maybe even just a hole in the regulations, uh, in the implementation of the regulations that could have caused an issue. Whatever the case was, they could have looked at it, and instead of just denying it, they could have advised the Department of Justice to withdraw, rewrite, and then resubmit. Okay, so that it could be something as easy as that, where they're just going to withdraw it, they're going to look it over, they're going to you know, take whatever tips they got or suggestions that they got from the OAL, rewrite it, and then put it in again as pretty much the same regulations but with different verbiage. So that's something to consider there. The other one is that we recently had the outgoing Attorney General for the state of California take her Senate seat, leaving a vacated space open at the Attorney General's spot here now in the state of California, and the person that took that over is even more anti-Second Amendment than Kamala Harris. And that is saying something in itself because she was extremely anti-gun. Well, the person that took her place is even more anti-gun. So there is a chance that he maybe looked at those regulations and wanted to make some changes that more fit his agenda. So he withdrew them from the OAL. He's going to rewrite them so that they more fit his idea of how they should go and then re- uh, reapply those app, uh, regulations to the OAL. Okay, so that's the two things. Either the regulations were bad and they advised the DOJ to resubmit them, or the DOJ looked at them after Kamala Harris was gone and decided they wanted to make them worse or better. Okay, uh, chances are it's probably going to be a little bit worse. But one thing it does not mean is that the regulations were withdrawn and now that's it. We're not going to have any type of bullet button assault weapons ban. There's still the ban. The ban is still going to take place and they're still going to try and force uh, registration on us. Okay. Here is one of the problems that I have with all of this. Right now they want you to register your bullet button assault weapon. That is the law that passed. That's the law that took effect on January 1st but we still don't have any regulations on how to do so. Now, people have until 2018 to register uh, the bullet button assault weapons that they've had since, you know, previous years, right? It's all the stuff that was kind of grandfathered in. 
But without proposed regulations, nobody can do that. Now, I don't advise anybody to do that, but basically nobody can do that. So you're postponing, 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 and giving the people less time to learn, to educate themselves, and then to apply that registration if that's something that they need to do. So hopefully they will push out that deadline of 2018 somewhere further so that those people that are actually going to do it would have that time to do it and do it the right way. So without regulations, you can't enforce the law, and without the regulations, people can't follow the law. So that to me is a really big problem. Now, here is my personal opinion as to what happened. I think the Department of Justice withdrew the regulations so that they can rewrite them under the new Attorney General's guidelines and thought process, and they're going to reapply those I think that it's going to be pretty much the same thing, maybe a little bit more difficult and overburdening for the public. I don't think California has a problem enforcing extra gun laws or just shoving extra stuff down our throat. I don't think the OAL has a problem with it either. Okay, so I think it's gonna be resubmitted. It's gonna be very close to the same or possibly even worse. So what do you do as somebody that owns an AR-15 or a bullet button assault weapon here in the state of California? Again, this is my personal opinion. I'm not a lawyer. Do not register. Do not register. And I've said this a million times, okay? Don't register. Do whatever you can other than registration while we fight this. I don't care if that means featureless. I don't care if that means adding some type of maglock. Whatever the case is and whatever you have to do, do not register it as an assault weapon because it is not an assault weapon. In California, just like what they're trying to do with the 30 round magazines and anything over a 10 round mag, if they say that you register it and you'll be safe, now it's registered, you can have it as is or whatever the case is, and you can just go on with the rest of your life, we know from past experience that that's not the case. The second you tell them, okay, I have an assault weapon now, that just gives them ammunition to say, you know what, we were wrong, uh, we should redo this next year, let's just go ahead and ban assault weapons going forward, and we need people that already registered them to take them to an FFL or take them out of state. California, doesn't care about the Constitution, and if you think you're safe and they're not gonna come take it simply because you registered it as an assault weapon, you're completely wrong. So do what you have to do to not register. Go compliant, and don't worry about what people say. You're gonna get a lot of people from other states that are gonna, that are gonna give you a ton of shit for being compliant, but you know what? You're not registering, okay? And that's the big deal. Don't worry about being compliant for now, we'll fight those laws. But in the meantime, registration is the last thing that you wanna do. So let's wait. They have to resubmit it within the year, but honestly, it could take up to a year, so we'll see exactly what happens. But the main point of this is, they will be resubmitted. That's the one thing. The assault weapons ban still stands, they'll be resubmitted, and then we will take it from there and go from there. So hopefully that answered some of your questions. Thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.